The natural beauty of the Bay Area has enticed people for centuries. Yet this once flourishing environment has become increasingly threatened by extensive water pollution. In the late 1840s, the California gold rush began, and thousands of optimistic miners flocked to California, hoping to strike it rich. With so many newcomers, the population in California increased from 8,000 to nearly 400,000 between 1840 and 1860. Since then, the population has continued to increase, and California currently has close to 40 million people, making it the most populated state in the U.S. This extremely high population has led to large production of trash and ultimately pollution across California. The majority of pollution in the Bay Area stems from urban runoff, which is the process by which rain collects trash and pollutants in the streets and carries them to the Bay. This dumping of waste in the Bay has major consequences on the environment that many people are unaware of. So the main consequences of urban runoff is degradation to water quality, habitat, and the threats to wildlife. Um, when it comes to trash in urban runoff, uh, when that is consumed by wildlife like birds or fish, they actually feel full. But instead of being full of food and other nutrients, um, they are full of trash, and that ends up starving them. So um, urban runoff r really is, uh, is, is a detriment to the health of the bay in terms of being able to support uh, wildlife, and then, you know, also a detriment to people who want to recreate in the bay. If you're a windsurfer or a swimmer um, and you're having to swim through, through chemicals and, and fertilizers and other pollutants in the water, it can actually be a public health hazard. Allison Chan is the Associate Director for Policy of Save the Bay, a nonprofit built on preventing the contamination of the Bay Area. Founded in 1961, the organization was created to prevent the filling of the San Francisco Bay, but has evolved over time to focus more on restoration and the preservation of water quality. To this day, we are focused on um, uh, protecting, restoring, and celebrating the San Francisco Bay, uh, which includes work uh, to protect habitat, existing habitat in the bay from degradation, uh, to prevent the flow of pollution to the bay, and to educate the community uh, in our region about the importance of the Bay, both for the ecological health of our region and for a, you know, a healthy region. Currently, Save the Bay advocates for bans on plastic and other trash sources, as well as the implementation of screens and storm drains and rain gardens to filter rainwater before it reaches the Bay. While it is one of the most prominent in the Bay Area, Save the Bay is not the only organization that advocates for further regulations on contamination. In fact, the local and federal governments as well as prominent universities of the area also have ideas on what can be done to improve the situation. Um, with respect to pollution, um, we can do a capping of a lot of the emissions on some of these other areas on fossil fuels and try to promote electric uh, vehicles versus the normal vehicles that just are on, uh, run by gas. You know, uh, I think uh, two factors is, is good environmental regulations and education and hopefully a, a virtuous society that <laughs> will, will follow those regulations and be stewards of the environment. Along with encouraging limitations, electric car use and awareness, the California government passed a single-use carry-out bag ban of 2016, which prohibited stores from distributing plastic bags, encouraging them to instead hand out reusable bags. The ban has had an immense success, eliminating one-third of the amount of waste sent to landfills prior to the ban, an immense feat considering the damage that plastic does to the environment. Unlike some other substances, plastic doesn't biodegrade or break down over time, and instead has threatened wildlife throughout the Bay Area for years. Even with this success, the issue still threatens the health of the Bay Area, and will continue to intensify unless individuals step up in their own communities to raise awareness and advocate for change. Other ways to help um, address uh, pollution issues in the Bay is to support local and regional policies that address, um, that address that issue. So supporting local efforts, local initiatives, whether they are local ordinances or just programs within your community to reduce the use of single-use plastics, and then pay attention when there are elections, um, and vote for people that talk about keeping uh, the bay clean. 
If the natural beauty and health of the Bay are going to be preserved for future generations, we as a community need to take steps to spread awareness and advocate for the necessary changes and regulations.